This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Thank you to our sponsors, Wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and GetFlywheel.com. Hello, welcome to another edition of Philly Drone Tech here in the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Um, well, it's, uh, I know it's been another while since I've had a, uh, an episode. I know the one that's up there is uh, getting rather stagnant, so I apologize for that. Uh, again, been busy, but uh, this is a pretty good time for me to get a new episode out because a lot's been going on lately, um, not only at the national level, but also regional to the Philly area. Uh, some important uh, stuff has been happening uh, that I'm getting involved with. So... Uh, well, let's get started, like I always do, and I first talk about the FAA. Um, you probably, you may have already heard about this, that the FAA uh, in uh, last month, in October, uh, has decided that uh, in, with uh, Christmas coming up and expecting uh, a, a million more drones to be in the hands of uh, new, uh, new flyers out there by Christmas, that... Um, well, being concerned with all of the near misses with airplanes and people flying them irresponsibly, uh, it's time to do something about that. I, I kind of knew that something was going to come down the pike with all that happening. Um, so what they have uh, proposed, what they're going to do, is start a national registry uh, for uh, quadcopters. Uh, anything uh, from a certain weight up, uh, definitely like uh, things like the, my Phantom here, uh, will be part of that. It's unknown about how small, uh, you know, a craft can get by without registering. But basically, what it means is, folks, is that you will be registering to get an N number, uh, or maybe they'll call it something different. But an N number is what uh, what is on all aircraft, and it's a registration number, uh, similar to what you have for like, uh, you know, your car uh, that registers your vehicle with uh, the FAA. Uh, so that will now be in a, uh, a national database. Um, they're going fast and furious to make this happen. They have everything on a condensed timetable. Um, as of when this uh, podcast gets out, um, they have uh, already, they had a committee put together, a task force of a number of manufacturers, including DJI and, and 3D Robotics, among others, uh, the AMA, uh, Academy of Model Aircraft Association, and no, numerous uh uh, trade and user uh, groups uh, involved with uh, drones, uh, along with the uh, Airline Pilots Association and others uh, to kind of come together and figure out a way to do this. What's needed, uh, what should be registered, how we should register it, and all that. Um, as of me making this podcast, the they have not publicly released what their findings are. That is to happen on November 20th. Now, if you're seeing this after November 20th, look on my Medium page and I will provide a link to uh, whatever uh, they announce. Um, I can say that what they're uh, hoping to do is make it a very streamlined, simple online process to register. Uh, this will be, they're hoping to have this done so that uh, starting with the Christmas season, when you get your drone, uh, you'll log online and register it. Uh, indications are it will be free, but it will be mandatory. Uh, meaning that if you do not register your drone and you are caught, uh, you can have uh, stiff uh, penalties and fines. Uh, so they, they are serious about this and there's, there's not going to be getting around it. We will have to register our craft. Uh, what uh, they're hoping for, what this means is, as uh, one quote that I heard a FAA spokesman said, when it comes to uh, people flying them uh, dangerously or uh, irresponsibly, they, they almost never have a problem finding the drone itself because uh, usually it crashes in the whatever. Um, it's finding the operator uh, for the, you know, for the, the penalties, for the, um, you know, for their, their misuse of it. So a registry will now allow for that. You will have a number that's, you know, tracks back to you. Um, if those of us that are in it pretty seriously, I, I kind of, found out pretty early and started doing it anyway that, uh, well, because I spent a lot of money on, on this guy here, um, I take him up in the air, I want him back. So I already have on mine, I have listed my name and phone number on it. And that's a, it's a procedure a lot of, um, 
I guess the more, you know, those that have been in the hobby a little more, we, we kind of do that anyway. Um, but uh, definitely one thing that does is that you're going to tend to fly it more responsibly if you know that if, it, if you do something stupid with it and the, the police pick it up, you're going to be in trouble. So that's what they're hoping for. Uh, the only thing is, it is like they decided to do this back in October. And, you know, typically the government moves at a snail's pace. But in this case, it's, it's quite opposite. They're moving at, uh, they're moving right to ludicrous speed. So uh, I'll be curious to see if they can actually pull this off in time for Christmas. Um, a couple things that are unknown that hopefully by the time the 20th of November rolls around that they will make clear as to how does this affect us that already have them. Um, from what I'm reading, we'll have to register two. Uh, they're not going to grandfather us in that we don't have to, but uh, the timetable may be different. Uh, their immediate concern is for all the new ones going out for the Christmas season this year. Um, those are the ones because those are all the new, the newest uh, flyers out there uh, that don't know the ropes yet and are likely to do irresponsible uh, things with it. Uh, that is what they're aiming for right now. Uh, I'll, most of this is based on giving a sense of, you know, giving, forcing you to have a personal responsibility for your actions. And with the literature that comes with your new drone, they will probably already have the Know Before You Fly uh, initiative that they started last holiday season. That, uh, again, education and responsibility. Uh, that's what the FAA is working for to hope to, to hope to kind of curb some of the mishaps that have been happening. Um, a lot of people on the UAS side are still kind of balking at the idea that uh, a drone can take down an aircraft. Uh, to be honest, they, they don't really know. Um, I have talked to some representatives of the FAA that uh, have said that they are actually testing whether what, what will exactly will happen. If you've heard of the, uh, the test they would do for windshields where they would take uh, frozen turkeys and launch them out of an air cannon to smash into a, a, a windshield to test its strength. Well, I don't think they're going to be doing frozen drones, but uh, they are doing testing to figure out exactly what would happen if one got sucked into a, a jet air, air intake. Um, you know, everybody's worried about that it will take the plane down. Will it? Uh, these made out of plastic and some carbon fiber and the battery might be an issue but uh, you know will the jet engine just spit it and chew it out or will it get bound up and 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 seize uh, those are things that they're working out now but in the meantime we will uh, we definitely will have to be registering our our, our drones but uh, like I said from what I understand that they uh, the industry is hoping for is that it's a, a very quick easy free process to do to encourage you even further that yes you you need to do this and you should do this so we'll see uh what happens with that uh i will have on my uh, medium page also links to uh, as you see here's a you can uh watch the entire uh video of them announcing this uh back in uh, back in october so i will leave uh links to that on my medium site as well well, my next story for this episode, uh, well, we'll hit home with uh, many people if you're in the Philly region watching the Philly drone tag here. Um, it concerns Ocean City, New Jersey, uh, a longtime uh, Philly favorite for uh, vacationers. Uh, I know for myself, uh, at one point I even owned, uh, owned a house down there, um, but uh, I grew up going to Ocean City every year. I, I know there's, I can find pictures of, of uh, my parents holding me as an infant on the uh, with the Ocean City boardwalk in the background. That's uh, how long I've been going there. So it's sort of like my second hometown. Um, so I was disappointed when I, I found out that uh, they were considering a full-on uh, drone ban, a permanent ban of uh, anything related to drones now and in the future. That includes commercial use. Um, well, this this uh, this seems a little kind of draconian or a little. Uh, maybe a little too much, I mean, to say the ban forever. Uh, based on, um, well, they have had some reports and they've had had, had some incidents of uh, some irresponsible drone use on the, the beaches and the boardwalk. Um, so anyway, let me talk about how I, I got down there. Um, uh, my 
third story, we'll be talking about the New Jersey uh, drone bot conference that I went to. And one of the, uh, one of the things that kind of stuck with me was uh, uh, somebody saying that one of the best things you can do as, a, as an advocate for uh, this technology is to educate your legislatures. Uh, a lot of places are starting to have to come to grips with they, they need to do something to uh, control the increasing amount of drone traffic uh, at parks, uh, cities, beaches, what have you. Um, however, a lot are also, there's, there's a big fear factor and a big negativity concerning drones uh, in, that you see a lot in the media and the press. And, and uh, unfortunately, that feeds, uh, that, that adds fuel to the fire as to why we need to, and Ocean City was a good, good, uh, good, good case study on this, uh, just, just ban them. There's no use for them. We don't want them. Uh, just 100% full-on ban. I don't want to see any drones in the sky ever. Uh, well, that's, that's uh, maybe pushing a little much because it is technology that is very useful, has a lot of applications we don't even know yet. And, uh, you know, I can kind of think back, being a history buff, that uh, I can think of people having the same conversation 115 years ago when those newfangled horseless carriages came out. Uh, they're noisy, they scare my horses, uh, they're dangerous, we need to ban them. And obviously we didn't do that. Uh, we found a way to coexist with them. In fact, now we all use them. Uh, so what my goal is, is to hopefully see that I can, if I can even persuade people to think a little more positively about them, that would be good. So what I decided to do is I, I went to uh, Ocean City. Uh, they had a, um, a second reading of their drone ordinance. Uh, they had this on November 12th, and I went down there. Let me, let me tell you about some of the things that they've, uh, this is some of the uh, objections that I, as to why we should ban drones um, that uh, I read in one of the, the, the local uh, news articles about it. Um, the capability to watch individuals and groups without notice and without their permission in an unprecedented way. Well, they, they have a little bit of a point with that, and there, there were a couple residents that talked about uh, that they think they were, they were on the beach and somebody was using a drone to follow them. That's wrong. Uh, but again, unfortunately, it's the stupidity of few that's going to hamper the rest of us. Uh, here's another one that took me by surprise. The capability to monitor cell phone and text messaging. That's not possible. Um, but again, here is what legislatures are basing why you should ban drones on incorrect uh, knowledge. Um, potential threat to aircraft, which is in particular concern in Ocean City because it operates a public airport. Well, they are true. Uh, the airport, uh, Ocean City has a very small municipal airport on the other side of the island toward the bay. Um, and yes, that does complicate things uh, for whether you can uh, fly drones. Um, it remains kind of unseen whether a small airport of that will continue to maintain the five mile radius, which I think is a little extreme. I believe with the new rule set, depending on how you read them uh, from the FAA, that uh, an airport of that size, you can kind of work with them with the drone traffic. They can kind of set the rules as far as, you know, based on the kind of traffic that they have and where their approach path is and all that stuff. Um, but uh, here we go, here's another one. A reasonable and unacceptable threat to the rights of individual privacy and safety. S safety I get, but again, on a public beach, you don't really have a right to privacy. Uh, you're in the public. Um, potential impacts because technology is developing so rapidly on safety, privacy, and Fourth Amendment rights that are difficult to predict. I've never heard the Fourth Amendment argument before. From what I understand, the Fourth Amendment is against search and seizure. And uh, I guess, but it's related to the government, not individual people. So I, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but again, it's more to kind of drive home support that we should have a full on ban. Um, I can say one thing that uh, was, uh, was, was good uh, was that there, are, there were several board members that were, while they understand the, sa the safety, I, I understand the safety concern. And uh, no, I, I don't think, Honestly, in Ocean City, New Jersey, you have no business flying at any time, any way you want to. Um, have you been to Ocean City in the summertime? They have very small beaches, and the beaches are just 100% fully packed all day long. 
packed, packed, packed. There is no, they even have like, uh, you can't even th throw a Frisbee or play volleyball. Why? There's no room. Uh, there's too many people. And you really have no business flying something like this over that many people. Uh, well, you don't even have a safe place to land it. So I'm, I'm for that. Um, what I'm not for is just the all out, full on ban. Um, this can hamper a lot of potential future use. Um, photography, uh, real estate, big, uh, big staple of Ocean City's economy is real estate. And realtors are using it more and more frequently. Uh, but the, the ban was going to cover commercial use as well, um, which uh, again, I think is, might be taken too far. I mean, it's not the commercial people that you really have to worry about. It's the first time users and the people who just want to kind of abuse it. Um, so here's what ended up happening uh, in the meeting. Uh, in fact, uh, here's, uh, there's a little footage of it and hey, hey, that's me. So uh, there, I, I guess I did. I gave a little bit of a, of a talk about it. Um, what they, uh, what they ended up doing was they, they instituted the full, full on ban. Uh, no drones are allowed to fly in Ocean City, and uh, violators are subject to ticketing and fine. But, but, it has what's known as a sunset clause, meaning that it is to expire. It expires the end of the season next year, September 8th exactly, for uh, in time with another um, uh, council meeting. So, uh, that means that something else has to fill its place, or it will just expire and the ban will be lifted. Um, I actually, I ended up being pretty happy about this decision, uh, because as I can tell you, as sitting there listening to, we probably had, it's a small, I mean, it's a small community, so it was a full room, but still only maybe like 30 people. But, um, you know, five people were adamantly for the ban and there were a few of us, maybe three of us that, uh, were asking them to reconsider. So I'm sitting, and the mayor is strongly for a full on ban. Uh, he clearly does not like them and does not think there is any useful need for, to have them in Ocean City, period. So based on that, I'm sitting there thinking, expecting the, the full ban to, to happen. And I was kind of pleased that they came up with this sunset clause uh, because they, we have a chance. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to um, they're gonna put together a committee, a workshop, as they called it, of uh, various people. They want experts. They want professionals. Uh, they want um, people that are for it, people that are against it, and they really want to iron out and educate themselves on exactly what it is they can do, what they can't do, and is there a way they can coexist uh, in Ocean City? So that has to be, that has to happen, and that has to, those rules have to be presented by September 8th of 2016. Uh, in order to, so basically, um, the ban is temporary. Uh, it, it, it satisfies the immediate concern of the residents, which is, the, that's the most important part of, of, of council there. It's for the residents, um, of their safety concerns while, uh, they have this committee. Um, I was very excited to find out about this committee. I've already have sent, uh, email correspondence to them, uh, even though I am not a resident. I hope that they allow uh, input and allow non-residents to be involved with it. Um, I'd like to come in as kind of like the, the, the pro hobbyist, if you will, um, because, because uh, I'm about to enter my third year of doing this and taking it very seriously, serious enough to make these podcasts, and uh, serious enough that um, I hope to be one of the first in line uh, for a commercial license when the FAA gets the rule set settled down. So we'll see what happens. And again, I have to say, I, I uh, in, in the end, I, I commend uh, Ocean City's uh, council for um, setting it up this way so that they, they didn't make the knee-jerk reaction that I was expecting. Um, there is time to show how it can be, you know, reasonably integrated. And I think it can. I think uh, ultimately um, I'd like to see that uh, certainly commercial use with a permit is fine. Um, especially again, we have to be cognizant of the airport um, that's that's in in the town. So I have to be cognizant of that. And I'd like to see um, off-season flying, uh, 
non-peak beach, empty beach flying. Uh, I, uh, here's a video I shot in uh, July of 14. Um, that this is a, like, again, middle of July. It's about 7 a.m. when I shot this. And as you can see, where's the big safety and privacy concern? There's nobody out there on the beach. So uh, I'm hoping to kind of show them stuff like that. And also show them the different types of drones. Um, you know, one of the things that was making me cringe uh, was one, people's use of it uh, irresponsibly. They had a, um, a high school football game. Uh, Ocean City High School was disrupted because somebody was uh, flying a drone over the field. Um, yet don't do that. Um, another one is, another thing that gets, really gets me upset is some manufacturers that are trying to sell their cheapy drone products, uh, you know, ones that are uh, more toy class. Uh, they sell them as spy drones, spy on your neighbors, spy on your friends. And they actually sell them that way. And one of the council members emphatically brought that up and said, look, this is like, you know, you can buy this for $80. And look, it says it has a, can it has a range of half a mile. You know, from a half a mile away, they can spy on you. No, that's not, they can't. And but, you know, can I blame him for thinking that based on the advertisement? No. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of my pet peeves that there are some unscrupulous marketers that uh, pretty much just to get a buck, they really aren't forward thinking about our, um, you know, about uh, the drone community uh, because it's unfair that you market something as a spy drone. If you want to buy a drone to spy on your neighbors, you shouldn't be buying a drone. Uh, that's not what they're supposed to be used for, folks. So, um, but again, I mean, it's that thinking that has to kind of be worked, uh, you know, worked around. Um, and again, I'm, I'm very hopeful that I can be part of this uh, workshop committee, which will probably take place, but realistically, we're close to the holidays now. So realistically, it'll be either starting at the beginning of next year. Um, but uh, definitely stay tuned, and I will be giving updates as I'm allowed to um, uh, on if I, if I do get into this uh, committee. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. It'll be kind of a new, a new thing for me, too, but uh, kind of like, I guess, a new aspect of what I want to do with uh, promoting uh, this technology is actually get involved with uh, municipalities and, and try to help steer them, you know, toward uh, positive thinkings uh, about the technology. So uh, there you have it for uh, uh, the, the big news about Ocean City. Uh, I'm going to take my little sponsor break now, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk to you about it again. This is something else that happened in New Jersey. Uh, this was back in September. I attended the New Jersey uh, Drone Bot Conference. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. And by Soho Mail professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. Welcome back. Well, I uh, mentioned in my last segment about how I'm uh, taking this uh, technology uh, more serious uh, amongst you know, doing the podcasts and uh, doing uh, kind of like my little advocacy work. Um, again, hoping to get involved with Ocean City. Uh, and the other part is uh, doing conventions. Uh, yes, there are starting to be conventions now. Uh, for drones. Uh, in fact, uh, one I went to back in September, this was in New Jersey, in Homedale, New Jersey, at uh, Bell Labs, uh, Bell, Bell Labs uh, uh, plant, uh, Drone Bot Works, Drone and Robot Conference. And uh, there's my little uh, book that I got for it. Uh, it was brought to you by the New Jersey uh, Tech Council. And uh, they had a number of speakers uh, related to uh, what's What's happening with drones? Uh, what's the where are they currently? What's the next step? Uh, the big uh, the the big uh, keynote speaker was Karen uh, Demio, uh, a representative of the FAA. Uh, it was very good to hear her discussion about uh, where things are going, and she talked a lot about the rule set that's uh, you know that they're working on. Uh, this was back before they talked about the registry, so she had uh, didn't really have anything to say about that. Uh, one of her little lines she came up with 
was uh, if you if you drone it, own it, uh, meaning uh, you know have maintain responsibility for what you're doing. That it is not really a toy; it is something that affects air air traffic. Uh, so uh, drone responsibly. Uh, they had some other uh, speakers. Uh, one of them kind of um, you know. I, I took the heart uh, when he basically talked about how to uh, kind of be more of an advocate, a positive advocate for the technology. Uh, educate people, educate your legislatures, uh, show them, you know, show them the way, show them how, you know, they it can be good technology that can be utilized uh, um, if in a good way. Um, there was another one that had a really great line uh, talking about where the technology is now versus where it will be in the future. If, uh, as he said, if you relate to uh, where drone tech is in the terms of the automobile, we're at the Model T. Uh, that's pretty uh, frightening when you think about how far we have to go, uh, considering how the, the technology, how far the technology already is. Uh, but um, unlike with automobiles, I don't expect it to take 100 years uh, to get to that point. Um, so that was a very good. The, the other part about uh, this convention was that they had a number of uh, demonstrations of uh, different technology and a number of different uh, exhibits. Uh, here's some video here uh, I have. Uh, this one, was, uh, again, it was a, a robot convention as well. So here's a little helper robot. Uh, it's, uh, I know it looks a little quirky, but uh, imagine it uh, if you're in a wheelchair and this is following you around the grocery store or following you around your day carrying your stuff for you. Uh, it says it can basically travel everywhere but up, upstairs. Um, and it's, it's basically meant to be at a price point that can be pretty affordable. Uh, so maybe you'll see those in the coming years. Um, another, <coughs> another one was from uh, Rutgers University. Uh, here's some drones here that are being used, or that they're, they're developing to be used uh, for spraying crops for mosquitoes. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, idea. Uh, currently what they do now is that's done with helicopters and obviously there's a much higher altitude uh, for the helicopter and the spray can travel a lot further than just the crops. Uh, they said these drones can be up, you know, they can be like as low as 10 feet above the crops and pinpoint uh, where they need to spray. Not only that, but they're working with Google to develop technology to take images from a camera and actually be able to identify the species uh, and class of mosquito that they are um, that they are spraying uh, against. Uh, that's that's coming very soon, folks. Uh, expect in a couple of years that you'll be seeing that. Um, uh, here's another demo from my. Uh, uh, this is a, a person that has a production business. Uh, this is a this is a, a larger, uh, more of a home built drone. It has a DJI Ronin uh, parts on it uh, for his uh, his gimbal. Um, gets very very good stable pictures. Uh, he had to take it outside to fly around, and there's a, there's a good demo of that. Alongside him, his uh, buddy had a, a Phantom Three, just like mine, uh, and uh, so they they took them off together, and it was a drone recording a drone. And not only that, but uh, if you look at it, it it's kind of looks like they're doing a little ballet in the sky together. Uh, very cool to see. Uh, very fun to see all this technology. There were about 300 people uh, were, were, were participants in it. Um, and um, again, there'll be more coming down the, coming down the pike. This is just the beginning, folks. Uh, so with that, uh, I end my show. Uh, and hopefully, probably by the next show, Speaking of the conventions, I will be reporting fully about the, uh, the Government Video uh, Expo in D.C. Um, along with, we'll probably have some better news as how the FAA registry is going to work and when it starts and all that. So, um, as always, you can get in touch with me through my Twitter account at DroneGuyTom uh, or through email of DroneGuy at tabloid.com. You've been seeing the links all on the screen the whole show. And everything that I talk about, I have a link to everything, uh, and including my uh, public comment to the FAA re, uh, concerning the uh, registry. Uh, I have that listed on my Medium account, and there's the link for it there, and you can see in that throughout the show as well. So uh, again, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming back and uh, seeing me, and I hope you got some uh, good uh, info out of it, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.